Greetings all and welcome to another session of Speaking Through My World. In this session, I want to briefly talk about different ways in which we can show solidarity with victims and survivors of gender-based violence, particularly those ones that have spoken out and have spoken out on public platforms, uh, those that have included the names, um, sometimes these perpetrators are well-known um, public figures, political figures, big business figures, and so forth. So the reality is that in South Africa, we've been living in this pandemic for years, way before COVID-19. Uh, our president even said in 2018, the gender summit, that we are in a crisis. Uh, our government have received the 24 demands, literally a tailor-made package of what needs to start um, the process of ender gender-based violence. And we know it's not going to happen just over, overnight because we need to unlearn and break, break down those patriarchal barriers and that those policies that have been written through a misogynistic lens and so forth. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But from a practical point of view, and not everybody is an activist, not everybody is out there spending 24-7 of their lives um, 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 fighting this. And so what you can do in your own environment is, it's a slight shift. And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, a couple of years ago, many of us spoke out against, against a certain perpetrator within, within our industry. And as we expected, there was going to be a lot of backlash. But also what, what, interest, what, what, what intrigued me was that there was a lot of, um, I wouldn't say support, but acknowledgement that people knew what this person was doing. And acknowledgement in the sense, even from one, one person, um, and, and, and I'll say it out now, who you know, claims to be a feminist and, and, and by this action has just shown that they're actually uh, part of the patriarchal princess parade of saying, yes, well, we all know that he, what he did, so I'm gonna go speak to him and I'm gonna have this mediation with him and he must just come forward. And, and as much as that's a very, very noble exercise to do, but we need to face the reality that, you know, abuse happens because of power. And it's, and it's the perpetrator exerting power over somebody else. So having a meeting with you, um, why would that person come forward when they've gotten away with it for many, many years? So the reason why I'm using this example is that this happens in many, many cases, and, and you've seen, and I've seen, I've even, you know, screen grabbed certain comments that on, on, on Facebook of people saying, yes, well, I spoke to this person, and, and, and yes, he must just come forward, because clearly, clearly he is guilty. So instead of using your energy and resources into having these meetings with these perpetrators and, 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 and then showing, um, I suppose, verbal support to, 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 to the victims and survivors, why not put the energy and resource into proper and concrete support? So if you have evidence, and evidence in the form of how did you know that he's been doing this for a while? So obviously somebody's told you before. What date did that happen? Was there an email? Um, how was it covered up? Even if it means calling out your business partner saying, actually, no, when this, when this person on your, in your company complained about this person, that was already... Um, uh, a warning sign. What did you do? Did you cover that up? Did you provide the support for that? So the, all these different things form another level of evidence. Take it to the police station, write up an affidavit, contact the victims and survivors saying, listen, I have a supporting, doc supporting documents or statements for your case, should you need it. That is showing support. Not rallying in behind the perpetrating as and having meetings with the perpetrators and so forth, while who already have and galvanized enough support, while the victims and survivors are not only suffering emotionally and psychologically, but because of speaking out and because of calling people out, many have suffered a huge financial loss, career loss, career change. This, this all um, adds to, to, to the primary level of use, which, abuse which, 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 they, which they suffered. So we can see, and it's happening, and the shift has already happened, is that we're tired and we're not being quiet anymore. And we're going to, be, we're going to continue calling out perpetrators, but we're going to be doing it in a strategic way. And so what I'm saying is that 
if you really are part of this, this, this fight to stop gender-based violence, then you also need to change your strategy. We need to change the strategy and the, and the, the dialogue um, that, that supports perpetrators. We need to demolish the rape culture that happens in our country. We need to stop blaming the victims and survivors. We need to change our language. And it's all of us. I mean, we were all brought up in a patriarchal society. So as we smashing those different policies and, 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 and learnings and understandings, we also need to change strategy on how we are going to provide effective and constructive help to those that have actually spoken out. We're all wounded. Every single one of us have gone through some level of trauma, especially if you've brought, if you're brought up in, in South African apartheid system. The reality is that also these perpetrators and even those of who have been protecting them have access to, to, to PR teams and, and big legal firms and so forth. So another example, uh, I've received le legal letters. I think the, the one that caused a lot of emotional pain and, and it took me time to get through and I'm back to my fighting mode again was that you know I received one trying to silence me and the wording was put in a very interesting way, but it included a whole lot of other organizations basically asking me where I'm getting this information from and, and asking for a roundtable discussion. And knowing that I'm an independent um, activist, uh, that, 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 you know, um, my income was already, uh, my income had already suffered from speaking out in the past. Uh, I don't know what their tactic was, but of course I had to get a legal firm. And as we know, a call to a lawyer costs money. A letter from a lawyer that a lawyer sends to somebody costs money. A consultation costs money. Um, following up, replying to them. Uh, but I don't think what they realized was that I called those other organiz organizations that, that they'd put into this letter. And unfortunately for them, the organizations didn't give permission to use their name in that legal letter. So I was intrigued, I was like, okay, so do they really want to, to bring up my change? Because I was really excited in this naive um, state thinking, well, maybe they do want to provide proper support, but then realizing it was another form of, of intimidation. And the financial impact, the, the emotional stress on that takes a toll on one's body, takes a toll on one's psyche. And many of us don't have that strength um, to get up after that. Fortunately for me, I did. Um, fortunately for me, I do. And, and so why I'm saying and, and talking about this and using this example is that these tactics are there. Um, these tactics are there to, to try and gaslight you, to try and intimidate you, to try and make you think that you're going crazy. Um, and so to avoid them, is that we need to be very, very strategic in how we call our perpetrators. So moving forward, it's all about the different levels of strategies that we need to take. For those who know, change your strategy and stop supporting the perpetrators. Stop having meetings with them. Stop um, calling other victims or survivors as unstable. Put, put that energy into to, to supporting the victims and survivors. To the victims and survivors who speak out, strategize on how you're going to call this person out. We have a lot of underground inf um, uh, organizations that are going. Be careful also of what you share in some, of these, in some of these groups because there's always some form of allegiance with another one and so forth. But as we combat this and as we move towards bringing about these changes, and it's a lot, it's a lot, but do what you can in your own environment. So you want to show support. You, 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 you know about a perpetrator. Stop having meetings with him and his business partners and so forth. Put that onto paper. Put it in an affidavit. Go and help the victims and, and, and survivors. If you don't want to get your hands dirty, there are so many organizations. It's going to be an EFT put through, through thousands of rand to, for, for a legal team. For those that speak out, we need your voices and, and speaking out sometimes helps with the healing. Remember, it's not gonna take away the pain, but it does help with the healing. And your voices are valid. 
We need to stop, we need to move away from, from, from silencing our voices, from, from undermining our pain. Organizations that have established four women, four, four survivors of gender-based violence, understand the, 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 the scope that you're working in, understand the sector. <coughs> particularly those ones who work off white privilege and have access to finances. You need to stop using black women's pain for your gain. And so for those that speak out, I mean, my, my DMs are open. My response time is 24 to 48 hours. Remember, I am also human, so sometimes I can't get to all of them. There are many, many other warriors and activists who work in the space who also provide the support. Know that your pain is valid. Know that you do deserve healing. But also know that we we reached a stage in our life where there's a shift. We're no longer going to tolerate this nonsense. And so while everyone works in their sectors, shaking up policies, shaking up sectors, shaking up um, uh, uh, spaces which they operate in, calling them out and providing galvanizing support, we all need to shift and change our strategies to support that. Move away from protecting that perpetrator. Thanks so much for listening.